Hey Devin, I know you're trying to take my job, but I'm really excited for this new release. And who knows, maybe 10 years down the line, you might even find this video. And in case you do, I just wanted to let you know I'm proud of you. Really proud of you for how far you've come. Okay, he's gone. I suggest you do the same. Befriend these AIs before they start bombing us. So this episode is going to be about AI. And you know what? Like in the near term future, I'm probably going to do more content around AI as well. Definitely want to cover this book with Python on hands-on machine learning. This is fantastic. So expect tutorials from this. Uh, I also joined the waiting list for Devin. So that's great. We're going to do live tests uh, as soon as I get the invitation. But yeah, I'll just give you a couple of my thoughts on like where do I think this is going to go in the near term future. In the last couple of years, I started using AI more and more to help speed up my workflow when it comes to web development. And the best so far I've used has been GitHub Copilot. Not because it generates the best quality code, just for the simple fact that I can quickly glaze over the autocomplete. And if it's correct, I can just hit tab and that saved me a couple of minutes already. Because in terms of code quality, I don't think there's enough of a big jump or leap between uh, GPT-4 and you know Gemini or all of these other ones. So even though ChatGPT and Gemini are really great generating code, the main problem for me is still the input, the user input and how that affects the AI model. Take a look here in Gemini, for example, I asked that, hey, in JavaScript, does an array triple equal to an array? And does that return false? And it said, absolutely, it does. Uh, because, well, essentially, those arrays get allocated to the different parts of the memory. But then I said, hey, in JavaScript, array equals triple equals to an array equals true. I was like, well, yeah, absolutely. I apologize. I must be misinformed. So it's like, make up your mind. Stop being a yes man, you little bitch. I also asked Gemini to take my chat CN component and refactor it with the use Devon hook that's just been added to React. It did it. You don't need use memo anymore when you have used Devon. So how is Devon any different than the chat GPTs? Well, Devon has its own integrated terminal and browser, and it can make like its own checklist uh, to solve problems. Now they posted a couple of examples here. So I'll take a look at one or two of them and give you my thoughts. So let's take a look at their first example here. This is a to-do application made by Devon and it works. You know, it's great. Like it has bugs in it. Like if I hit enter here, it's not going to submit it. Uh, but yeah, I can go and edit this and save it and delete it. Now it doesn't have like, it doesn't persist. So if I refresh, it's just gonna be gone. But it works, right? It's great. So it's a simple application here. And my question is, I wonder how much this actually gonna take to generate. Like I can't wait to see this in real life examples. Is this gonna take 15 minutes, 20 minutes or two minutes? If it takes two minutes, great. After that, how much does it take to make iterations of it? So let's say, okay, I'm happy with this, but I want to add. So when you hit enter here, it also uh, submits the post and this should be black. Like if I add that command, then is it going to take another 15 minutes? Because that's not worth it then, because uh, it'll take me two seconds to implement that, right? And it's also going to be interesting to see how it would fit into a larger scale application. Like let's say I have an e-commerce website. Can I just like nip in and drop in a feature without like hopefully not breaking anything else in my code? You know, how long is that going to take as well? So it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to understand more complex systems. In case you're an anxious loser like me and you're still worried about AI, let me show you a reason why you shouldn't. Head over to the screen. Okay, so we have Ryan Carniato here and he built Solid or Quick. Sorry, hold on. There's so many. Don't blame me. It's, it's solid. Okay, so he posted an example of that to-do app that we just had a look at. And as you can see, <laughs> the, the bundle size of this is 130 kilobytes, which is quite a quite quite a chunky size for a simple to-do list app and as you can see the performance is quite bad on it as well and uh, he said that it was like including chakra ui and framer motion like framer motion is quite a big package for animations but i don't think i've seen any animations on that to-do list application so this is the only thing you know like this is quite a primitive application it's probably like one of the first things you learn when you get into web development. So mistakes like this, right? You can imagine the more complicated system, like, you know, like how much extra dependencies it's gonna add just for the sake of adding it. Like imagine it just needs a small portion of animation on the website, so it includes this whole big package in it just to use it, right? Because that's the first thing that I found. So in terms of like optimizing and like even moving forward in web development, like who's gonna create the new, you know, new paradigms because uh, web development is evolving constantly, right? Uh, so, yeah, as you can see, <laughs> if you didn't swell to pre-act solid, 
They're all about five kilobytes. Okay, now imagine building Facebook with Devin, right? So yeah. They also have this demo of Devin making game of life. Why? Just play Fortnite. You know what I thought was quite funny? They have this example here on their YouTube where uh, Devin encounters a bug in the terminal and then it just fixes it on its own. It goes online and searches the bug and then bish bash boof, it's done. But then they have the other example here with the game of life. And if you open this one up in the browser, it's just riddled with bugs. You know what we should do? Like, who am I supposed to trust right now? Uh, we should just mainly start running benchmarks on next off. V5, especially. I'm mainly not releasing my damn course because of the damn package. It just did like a minor update. And my session object just didn't have the tokens in it anymore. Why next off? Why? Off JS text off? I'm just having an identity. I'm having an identity crisis. I also wanted to mention the graph that they posted here, where Devin managed to solve like 14% of GitHub issues, open GitHub issues, compared to like 0.52 that ChatGPT 3.5 has, and 1.7 that GPT 4 has, which is quite insane. Now again, this might not seem a lot, 13% of the issues out of 100, but like the leap is just what's exciting here, right? This is the worst. This AGI is ever gonna be. And if we look at the release date of GPT-4, that might feel like ages ago. That was a year ago. So <laughs> remember, in terms of AI, it's growing 10x the speed. But no, I honestly think AI is gonna get bigger and bigger. And the worst case scenario, like if we don't need to make UIs anymore or program, we could still learn AI and how LLMs work and actually improve the robots themselves. So there's still gonna be some sort of market for us out there, in my opinion. But AI is not gonna stop, even though like loads of people are still saying AI sucks or we don't want this, we don't want this. Ultimately, money dictates everything. If you've been around this planet, goddammit, you know, oh, money controls everything. People hate Apple products, you know, they hate that. You know, they, the poor Chinese people in the factories get overworked and they have metal bars now. But airdrop though is quite nice, isn't it? So thank you so much for watching this episode. Let me know down in the comments. Is Devin an ally or a foe? Leave it down and I'll delete the comment. Uh, until next time, drop a like, drop a sub, especially now. It's hard times, it's free. And yeah, I'm very excited to release the full stack course very soon. I'm gonna drop the trailer and I think it's gonna be something quite, quite great. Until next time, bye bye booey.